Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we're going to look at the allies for Caradron Overlords and Brock Thring, um, and we're just going to be honing in on the shooting options as a comparison to our shooting units in Caradron Overlords. So, our allies that are available, uh, Dispossessed, Fire Slayers, Iron Weld Arsenal, and Stormcast Eternals. Um, I'm also sort of skipping over Stormcast Eternals. Um, their shooting is not really the best uh, to begin with, um, and thematically it doesn't really fit. Uh, I'm just going to stick to um, you know really Dispossessed and Iron Weld Arsenal since Fire Slayers don't really have any shooting. Uh, Brock Thring lets you take one in four of your units to be Dwarden, um, and just a, a note here, that's in addition to your allies. There is no restriction there, so basically half your army can be, you know, dispossessed, fire slayers, etc., in addition to your Karadron overlords. And points-wise, it can certainly be over 50%. So just some notes for Brock Thring. Uh, Gotrek can be used outside of allies, so he'll still let you have your allies allotment, even though he's, I think, 520 points. Um, this also theoretically lets you use all of the Compendium Dwarden, um, but you want to check with your TO or your opponent before you actually do that. And oddly enough, that lets you include the Hell Cannon as well, which is a Chaos unit. Uh, that one's one that you definitely want to check with your TO first. And if your opponent doesn't uh, want you to use a Hell Cannon in your Karadron Overlord's army, you should not play with that person because that is awesome. Uh, and when you're playing in Brock Thring, they, those added units only get the Brock Thring keyword. They don't get Skyfarers. They don't get... Marines, they don't get a uh, Karadron Overlords, so they really only benefit from a couple of buffs out of Brock Thring, and that's it. Um, they can't be loaded on ships. They uh, don't benefit from most of the Karadron Overlords buffs. They don't get Ether Gold, etc. They there's only a very limited number of synergies you actually get with units in Brock Thring, which is better than them being ordinary allies, but still, it's not a huge boost. So anyway, let's get into the units. Iron Drakes out of the Dispossessed are probably your best option for bringing in shooting units. Now, we look across this and we see they have a 16 inch range on the majority of their shots. Uh, the Grudge Hammer Torpedo is a 20 inch range. Uh, that's, you know, one in 10, I believe, or maybe just your champion can get that. Uh, and then the Drake Fire Pistol is also champion only, and the Grudge Hammer Torpedo is definitely a better choice. So they're hitting on threes, wounded on threes, rend one one damage uh the torpedo is threes and threes rend two d3 damage so those average out to an average damage output against a four up save of th about three and a half damage uh per volley for a unit of 10. at 150 points for a unit of 10 that comes out to damage per point of 0.0227, which is kind of like right in line with the majority of the rest of Karadron Overlords. It's a little bit on the higher side. So they're a solid ally to bring in, although they don't benefit from a lot of the other goodies that you get with Karadron Overlords. However, if they don't move in that turn before the shooting phase, they get double shots. So that increases their damage per point. Uh, obviously, it doubles it. And it brings it to 0.0455 per point. Which is, compared to everything else in Karajan Overlords, absolutely ridiculous. Um, 
Now, what you typically need to do to make that really worthwhile is a spell in a bottle plus a soul scream bridge to get them across the battlefield to get them in range, and then they do their double shots and take out a bunch of your opponent's army, and that's going to skew your per point value because effectively the points for that soul scream bridge are really part of that damage output and possibly also the ether chemist and there's some value to you know using your artifact on that um at least in a uh a uh oh, i'm losing the word but your uh, opportunity cost that's the one that i was looking for opportunity cost is what you're really looking at uh in the difference in artifact selection but overall this is really really powerful and you know if you're already going to take an ether chemist and you're looking for a good spell in a bottle trick this is certainly a good one to get a group of say 20 iron drakes across the board and blast away at your opponent well after that excitement we're going to move into uh the things from iron weld arsenal our two artillery pieces and i tried to do my best to come up with how well do these things actually work out um to try and optimize them because the Hellblaster Volley Gun and the Hellstorm Rocket Battery are absolutely terrible. And I tried. I really tried here. Um, I included the Cogsmith. I recalculated it with a Lord Ordinator. And it just still doesn't get there. So we have the option with the Hellblaster Volley Gun to roll one, two, or three decks against uh, your enemy target your um you roll d6 for each deck that is firing you're on fours and threes minus one one damage and if you roll doubles on your attack dice the gun jams and does not fire so the cogsmith which is the column all the way over to the right that uh lets you get a reroll on that if you get a jam so that is recalculating there for um you know adding the point value of the cogsmith and recalculating the damage output what you'll see here is that you know just our base is less than 0.01 per point which is absolutely terrible that's like half of your average out of Caradron overlords that is terrible compared to everything else in cities of sigmar i don't know what they're thinking here they would literally have to cut the cost of the hellblaster volley gun in half for this to even be a thought of consideration and it's only 120 points um, I tried adding the Lord Ordinator and your cost per point or your uh, damage per point actually gets worse because the Ordinator is so expensive. Now, if you take more than one volley gun, it would balance that out. However, the problem is if you're taking them as allies, as you do in uh, Caradron Overlords, you really only have room for two Hellblaster Volley Guns and one Ordinator, so it's not really getting you very far here. And your damage per point actually goes down significantly with the Lord Ordinator. And it goes down even, you know, it goes down as well with the Cogsmith. Basically, the Hellblaster Volley Gun is absolutely terrible. We add into that that it basically doesn't move. It does have a 24 inch range but that doesn't really get you there if you're comparing to all of the ranges across caradron overlords everything's got 24 inch range or 18 inch range it is so common to shoot that far that it's nothing special 
to have a Hellblaster volley gun that moves, I think, three inches. That can go 24 inches uh, in its range. And there's a very good chance that absolutely nothing happens. You know, if you're rolling three decks, you actually have a 50% chance of jamming. So half the time, you do absolutely nothing. If you add a Cogsmith, you know, that brings it down to 25% chance of jamming. But it's still really bad. Um, and if you look at, you know, without a reroll, it's actually better to roll two decks than three decks because of how frequently it jams. The rerolls are the only thing that make rolling three decks valuable. So this is just god awful. And we're going to see now with the Hellstorm rocket battery that we're in the same boat again. So I didn't go to the full extent of Lord Ordinator and all of that stuff because we know basically we have the same issue. For our hit wound or our hit roll here, we're assuming that all the shots are fired at the same target, so we get uh, plus one to hit, three attacks, fours and threes, rent to D3 damage. Your damage output against a four up save is 1.67. A Cogsmith lets you re roll ones to hit, so it's giving you very uh, minimal addition to power here. Our damage per point is still just above uh, 0.01, which is terrible. It actually is worse when you factor in a Cogsmith because you're getting such a small buff out of that Cogsmith. Same problems here. You also can't fire like point blank with this. If you're uh, targets within 10 inches, you can't shoot at it at all. So you get that uh, benefit of having an up to 36 inch range. But again, your Corrigan Overlords have lots of range, lots of mobility. So what would ordinarily be an upside is definitely a very big meh. Um, I don't understand what they were thinking when they were costing these things out they need to be like half the price that they are at best. Um, particularly this one, like it used to be D6 damage and at least then it would have been a little bit better, but this is still just like not good. And there's so many better options in Caradron Overlords. I think your real trick here for bringing in shooting units outside of KO is to run Brock Thring, bring in Iron Drakes with a Soul Scream Bridge and Spell in a Bottle, and just unleash Holy Hell on your opponent right up in their face. They've also got, you know, a four-up save on them as well, so they're going to be able to kind of be a little bit of an alpha block for your opponent that they are not going to be able to uh, chew through them really quickly. So, all in all, um, you know, not a lot of interesting additions to Karadran Overlords for shooting. They are the shooting army, basically, um, and any other good shooting that you get out of other armies, um, they're either, either you can't use them in Karadran Overlords, or, you know, the only real good thing to be adding is Iron Drakes, I think. Anyway, kids, that's it for now. As always, like, subscribe, Patreon, all of those things. Um, and I will see you all later.